Russian glide bombs are wreaking havoc on Ukraine. During the Battle of Avdivka, the weapons were credited with helping to turn the tide in Russia's favor. Now, Moscow says it's ramping up production of the munitions. I've reported before on Russia using gliding munitions in my story about the drill. Glide bombs are made up primarily of two main components. First and probably the most obvious is the bomb itself. And secondly is the glide kit which attaches to the bomb. Now, when it comes to the Drell, which I reported on previously, that used a cluster munition. But most of the glide bombs that Russia is producing right now comes from the FAB family, which stands for Fugusnaya Avia Bomba, or Aerial Demolition Bomb. Okay, let's get back a little bit more to the second primary component of these glide bombs. It's called the UMPK, or the Unified Gliding and Correction Module. It's this thing right here. It attaches to the top, it's essentially two different wings, and it has some sensors which help guide uh, the bomb as well. Now this UMPK not only increases the range of, the, of these bombs, but it also increases the accuracy, essentially turning dumb bombs into smart munitions. Russian Su-34 and 35 bombers can carry two FAB 1500s at a time which they did dozens of times every day while taking Avdivka. That tactic left the town in ruins. Ukrainian soldiers described the FAB 1500 bombing runs as hell. Because of the UMPKs, Russian aircraft can launch glide bombs 25 miles from the target, outside the range of most of Ukraine's air defense batteries. To counter the threat, Ukraine moved some of its anti-aircraft weaponry closer to the front lines, that helped Ukraine shoot down more Russian jets in January and February, but it also led to the loss of some missile systems. Oh, and Ukraine is also running low on the interceptors for those systems. So as long as there are no Ukrainian F-16s in the skies to ward off enemy aircraft, Russia sees the use of glide bombs as a way to alter the course of the war. To keep the stream of destruction flowing, though, Russia needs to keep up its supply of FABs. The Ministry of Defense says it has plans for a, quote, large increase to FAB 500 production. The MOD says it's also doubling the output of FAB 1500 bombs and will put the FAB 3000 back into production. The number in the bomb's name indicates its size. The FAB 500 weighs 500 kilograms. The 1500 weighs 1500 kilograms and the 3000 weighs, that's right, 3000 kilograms. The increased size also means increased destructive capacity. An FAB 500 has a damage radius reportedly around 250 meters. The 1500 ups that radius to 500 meters and the FAB 3000 has enough explosive material to reportedly wipe out a good chunk of things within 900 meters. Considering the increased use of the smaller FAB variants as glide bombs, it makes sense why Russia is increasing production of those munitions. But the 3000 is a little more puzzling. The only plane Russia has that can carry it is the Tu-22, the Russian version of a B-1B Lancer. Russia already lost several of these aircraft over the course of the war, and using them to launch an FAB-3000, even with a glide kit, means putting the strategic aircraft at significant risk. The facilities producing the FAB munitions are obviously prime targets for Ukraine, because it's really the only defense it has against the weapons right now. That, and destroying the planes carrying them. That could change, though, once Ukraine finally gets its F-16s in the air. The Western fighters can be armed with long-range missiles and will greatly amplify Ukraine's ability to fend off Russian aircraft. The latest indications are Ukraine should have F-16s in the air sometime this summer.